Uh, a lot of people equate uh, crime and homelessness as, as two of the major problems in the city. And I believe in the last census, the homeless census, we were up at about 12 or 14,000 um, homeless persons in, uh, in San Francisco. Um, and so it, is care not cash working? Well, I think it is working, but there is no long-term solution that I see yet. It's a, it, what he's doing, uh, the mayor with care not cash, is he's moving in the right direction. Uh, he's taking the money out of the system and using it for service. Uh, I did the same thing with the, what I call the matrix program, but it was not as accepted. And a lot of it is uh, marketing techniques or semantics, whatever you want to use. But when you have the word matrix, it sounds more like a kind of a militaristic uh, deployment of personnel to uh, attack the homeless. That wasn't the intention at all. It was uh, just the same kind of a program as Care Not Cash, but it's more acceptable if you use that term and you also have, say, the police there, but behind the scene and not there as a team with the social worker, the healthcare worker, uh, and a police officer right out in front. It was hard for me to sell because my background was from law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And I was painted uh, as the person who would give more of a credence to the criminal justice side rather than the social worker or the healthcare worker, when in fact it was the same thing. We also took money out of the system and give, it, give them service, but uh, that was just when I had left office and that was never implemented after I left office. Gavin Newsom reestablished that and I believe that the money now is being used to provide the services, more housing, more uh, medical attention and care for the people who need it. Uh, I love his idea of uh, getting the neighborhoods involved and corporations and businesses, people uh, who uh, come together to deal with uh, being part of the solution rather than always blaming government in terms of uh, what are you doing to get rid of the homeless. He's involving the community more, and so it's like a uh, homeless outreach that's beyond governmental agencies. Uh, and I think that's successful. Yes, you're right. When you go around the street, you're still going to find pockets of people who are homeless, sleeping in doorways. He has to take it on as an issue day in and day out, just as I did. There's no instant solution. There's no quick fix particularly when you're seeing uh, uh, the difficulty of uh, the wages and prices in San Francisco. In a city like San Francisco, it's a very difficult city to live in to begin with. And so uh, many people have reached that spot where they just, they don't have health insurance. They can't provide the rent, and so they're living on the streets. Then you have that huge uh, volume that may be on uh, drugs or mental health. And those are issues that I believe need to be addressed the way Gavin is addressing them. He'll never have enough money to solve the whole problem. It's just physically impossible because San Francisco is showing itself to be a compassionate, sensitive, caring city. And other people look at it and say, well, why not move to San Francisco too? You know, uh, others may not be as sensitive to the issue as we are in our city, and nor do they get the high profile reaction that we do here in San Francisco. And so my sense is that uh, Gavin is making progress, but there's still a long ways to go. So do you think he can, he can help bring the problem under control during his term in office, or is it going to be something that we're going to have to look towards a decade down the road or two decades down the road? Well, solving? as long as you have uh, issues on the uh, national level and state level where there's funding being withdrawn from cities uh, and you have uh, unfunded federal and state mandates uh, asking for money from programs, uh, Mayor Newsom will probably never be able to say he can totally solve the problem just like he's never going to be able to say he's going to totally solve homicides or the crime rate. He may have it uh, uh, handle on it and reduce the crime rates, but he can't totally eliminate it. It's just uh, a fact of life. He can, uh, that's part of his role is to be a great role model, deploy his personnel and the funding that he has to the best of his ability, and motivate the people that he has working for him, all 26,000 city workers, to get the job done. But there is no instant quick solution to any of those problems. Uh, earlier in your speech uh, tonight, you also mentioned uh, Muni and some of the inefficiencies and the work rules you had to deal with uh, as mayor. Uh, one, a recent study came out saying that uh, Muni is only about 60 70 percent on time, and even though we have a voter, uh, a voter approved initiative uh, establishing a service level of 85 percent on time, uh, what do you think it's going to take to bring Muni to that service goal? Well, number one, I'm not sure what their funding capacity is at the present time. But uh, I know that there has been an infusion of money to buy new buses, new light rail vehicles, uh, a new uh, Third Street uh, corridor line that's going all the way out now to Candlestick Park. 
Uh, these services are expanding. Uh, I would, first thing I would do, I'd take another look at what the existing work rules are. Is there anything in there that is causing us a problem where you can't freely deploy drivers to other lines if necessary to make sure that there's no gap in service? Uh, do you have enough drivers? Is there an inordinate amount of overtime because you have a driver waiting for a bus to be repaired, or can you now uh, get a driver on straight time and be able to use the money in a more efficient way? Those are the first things I would look at. Then the next step I would look at is the supervision. You have to have muni inspectors out there on the lines, checking uh, the service, the quality of service, maybe even getting on the buses and light rail vehicles. Uh, how are the, uh, the demeanor, the attitude, the timing? Uh, is there any just natural delays or is there something that we could do something about to correct? Uh, supervision is very important in some of these. When you have an, hundreds of lines out there spontaneously going in different directions, there's got to be spot checks every so often so the drivers know that supervisors are out there and they never know when they're going to see them. So there are ways that you can do it. I also uh, remember as a, uh, as a mayor at that time, I would go out every so often at nighttime and ride the buses and light rail vehicles, go to the car barns, find out what the mechanics are doing or not doing, and uh, kind of uh, let them know that at any time there could be an instant surprise visit or inspection. Those are the kind of things motivate people. But at the same time, I do say that the overwhelming majority of the uh, Muni drivers and uh, Muni employees are trying to do what's best for the city of San Francisco. I think you'll always find an element when you have large numbers that maybe look for shortcuts or find easy ways to uh, take a day off rather than work the line. But uh, that's something you constantly work at as a supervisor.